All right, it's time for a bracket breakdown with Matt Norlander. I hold in my hand Matt Norlander's bracket, and I don't know if you can see it, but there are a couple crossouts, a couple last minute changes from Norlander because you can do that all the way up until noon Eastern time. Let's start, Matt, in the West with Gonzaga, where they're the one seed. Now, they haven't played in 10 days, and they're going to have to wait even longer. Saturday at 920 Eastern time is when they're finally going to get back on the court against Norfolk State. Obviously, Matt has Gonzaga advancing there. The question, Matt, is in that 8-9 game, Oklahoma missing Devion Harmon out for a couple games. What do you think in that matchup? I have not changed my stance on this Oklahoma-Missouri game, even with the Harmon news. This is the ultimate coin flip. I have a game every single tournament where I'm convinced the team that I pick will be the team that loses. I am picking Oklahoma. Take Missouri, thank me later. I just don't get any sort of vibe for either of these teams. I'm sorry. They've been stumbling toward the NCAA tournament. I almost am taking Oklahoma because the Harmon news makes me feel like I should take Missouri. But they've got Austin Reeves. they got Brady Mack. They st Oklahoma still has enough. I'll, I'll ride with the Sooners there. But that is, that is the ultimate completely flip a coin and hope you get lucky game. Okay, moving down to Creighton, UC Santa Barbara, and Virginia, Ohio. Creighton and Virginia, the two high seeds here, but both with major question marks. You do have Creighton advancing over the Gauchos. You do have Virginia advancing over Ohio. So that sets up a matchup between the four and the five. Bunch of question marks. We'll get to that in just a moment. Down to the Drake Bulldogs, who won last night by a point against USC. I know you love USC in, in this bracket, in this region, Matt. Is Drake going to pose any problems for the Trojans here? I actually do think that Drake is going to give USC a good game, but I just, the USC, uh, Evan Mobley, who is the center for USC, he's going to pose significant problems for them. So I do like USC to advance, but good on, good on Drake. Uh, and then in the Kansas Eastern Washington one, I, I like Kansas to move on. Kansas will not have Jalen Wilson, who is not currently with the team uh, due to COVID protocol. Okay, picking the West region with Matt Norlander, and we're going to go all the way through down to Oregon and VCU. Another late Saturday game just before 10 Eastern time. It'll probably be pushed back to after 10 Eastern time. It's all right for a West Coast team like Oregon. You've got the Ducks advancing. And Iowa Grand Canyon, this is one that our Todd Furman is, says, might, says might be a little bit closer than we think. He loves the Antelopes to cover against Iowa. So here we go. Gonzaga, Oklahoma. Matt has the Zags, the number one overall seed and the favorite to win it all advancing. And this is where it gets interesting, Matt. What about Creighton, Virginia? Okay, so as we speak on this Friday morning, Virginia is scheduled to leave quarantine. They, are, they were uh, still uh, isolated uh, into Thursday evening. Uh, that brings out a lot of questions about how ready they'll be able to go. I am fading the heavy UCSB pick over Creighton. I will take Creighton to win against Virginia as sort of a way to hedge in case Virginia actually doesn't show up and play well against Ohio. I do think Creighton will rebound from that terrible Big East final appearance to move along. They've actually got the offense to get out of this part of the bracket there. And so a Gonzaga-Creighton game would actually be a, a pretty uh, a pretty competitive matchup between uh, between two offensive uh, two offensive oriented teams. All right, that's a Sweet 16 matchup according to Matt Norlander in the West. USC-Kansas, and what are we going to get from the Jayhawks with their COVID issues? That's another good question. I mean, David McCormick, who missed the short stint that the that Kansas had in the Big 12 tournament, he is back with the team. Bill Self said he actually, I think he's uh, he's scheduled to join them and play in the in their Saturday matchup. So I'm taking into account him being available here. But I will take again. I will take USC in part because I think USC is good enough to beat Kansas, which has been a top five defensive team the past month in college basketball. Kansas has, but. In the event that Eastern Washington goes nuts on us, I'm going to take USC to, to hedge against that. And then in, the, in this other game, I, I have Iowa, but or, I, I, I almost pulled the trigger on Oregon. Oregon has a slew of um, uh, just terrific wings. It can score. It can cut into Iowa's defense. Ultimately, I don't think Oregon has a big to match up with Luca Garza. But I'm, I'm sniffing, you know, five points or fewer for the Hawkeyes in that win. That would be the first time Iowa advances to the Sweet 16 since the 90s. It's been a long time since Dr. Tom Davis. So these are the Sweet 16 matchups in Matt Norlander's bracket. Matt has Gonzaga advancing past Creighton. And then, I, I know you're a little bit shaky on the Hawkeyes and you love USC. Who do you have in that matchup? 
Evan Mobley, a top three pick in this year's NBA draft, shuts down Luka Garza, and USC advances to the Elite Eight. We get an all-West Coast showdown. All-West Coast showdown. Uh, USC is my pick. It's it, USC is my pick versus, versus Iowa. It will be Gonzaga versus USC in that part of the bracket. Yeah, so we'll I've fix got that USC. for you. I've got, I know, I think you, I think Hassel got into the graphics yeah, there, right. by the way, trying to change my pick. Listen, <laughs> I got to have a little bit of danger in some of this stuff. And in the West region where Gonzaga is just, I cannot remember a team that was as overwhelming of a favorite in a region as Gonzaga is this year. Gonzaga is obviously my pick to, uh, to cruise through. Yeah, most people are going to have Gonzaga advancing through the West. Let's continue to pick the bracket with Matt Norlander, and we are going to move now to the South region for Matt, and that's where Baylor is the number one seed. They play 3.30 Eastern time today against the Hartford Hawks. Matt has Baylor advancing out of there. Really intriguing first round 8-9 matchup between Carolina and Wisconsin. Who do you like? Uh, you just Reese, right past your familiarity with the uh, the West Hartford restaurant scene. I noticed that hassle. Okay, UNC <laughs> against Wisconsin. I will go with UNC in this one. Better collection of bigs. Wisconsin has been a complete inconsistent program team for the past six weeks. So I'll go UNC. That sets up a, an intriguing second round. Yeah, if you're in West Hartford, go to Brico, go to Max Oyster, a couple of good spots there. Down to the 5-12, Winthrop, a real sexy 12-5 upset pick. Matt, you going with that? Give me the throp. I love that this is the last tip of the day. Real quick, by the way, on something you mentioned before, Hassel, all of these tip times are when these games will happen. Because of COVID, there are no more than three games in a venue, so there is more than enough time between tips. I would be surprised hmm. if any of the tip times you see are not actually when the games tip off. I'll take Winthrop. They only have one loss. And I wonder if they can actually even pull away from Villanova. I hope I don't regret this pick. Purdue is going to beat North Texas. Grant McCaslin's done a great job with the mean green, but I will take the Boilermakers. Travion Williams, as you well know, has been a top 15, top 20 player in America. North Texas has nobody to stop that dude. Okay, so in that little pod, Matt has a little upset with Winthrop. How about here, Utah State and Texas Tech? I will ride with Utah State. Give me a little of an upset here. Texas Tech is quality. Don't get me wrong. They can win this game by 10 points. I'm simply going to go with the team that has the best player on the floor. Namiyash Keita out of Texas, out of Utah State, excuse me, is the highest rebounder in the tournament, the best shot blocker in the tournament, the most valuable player in this game. Craig Smith is a really, really good coach. This is a fascinating matchup for me. I, we have a great first Friday afternoon window. This will be the third tip in succession once we get going a little afternoon today. And Arkansas Colgate going to be a really high scoring game, but Matt thinks Arkansas is going to score the most. Down to the bottom of the region and the 7 10 game, a pick 'em between Florida and Virginia Tech. Who are you picking? First game of the tournament. Let's go. All right, I'm in my bag now. Okay, this is going to be a Virginia Tech pick for me, okay? Only here's the wild card though. Three games in like six weeks for the Hokies. I will take Mike Young. Florida is as capable of just, you know, suffocating Vatek and winning this by seven as it is as not, sh of sh not showing up and losing by 15. Virginia Tech was the better team this season. I'll go with Virginia Tech. And then I've got Ohio State moving on without too much of an issue against Oral Roberts. But uh, Oral Bob's got the leading score in the tournament. And I do think that game has a chance of being like, ooh, tie, tie situation at halftime. Then OSU pulls away. We get a two versus 10 second round. Okay. And I think that's uh, one of our sports line experts best bets later on today. Uh, later on this morning, we're going to get that to you. And we'll, we'll tell you which side that expert falls on. So uh, that's how it looks with a couple of upsets. The 12 seed Winthrop, the 11 seed Utah State, Baylor, North Carolina, and Matt has Baylor advancing past the Tar Heels. How about Winthrop Purdue? Are you taking the throp to the Sweet 16? I'm not going to take the throp. I really want to take the throp. I love that we're making the throp a thing, <laughs> but I will take Purdue I guess sometimes I can't quite pull the trigger here. I'm just going to hedge again. I, Winthrop is good enough to do it, but if they get knocked out by Villanova, I absolutely love Purdue if it were to play Villanova. So I'm also, you know, playing the bracket here. Give me Purdue, which has been uh, a really good team that hasn't gotten hardly any love because it hasn't been a top three team in the Big Ten. So it's been a bit overshadowed the past two and a half months. All right, Baylor, Purdue to the Sweet 16 and Matt Norlander's South Region. Arkansas to the Sweet 16 past Utah State. And Ohio State, Virginia Tech, you thought Ohio State might have some issues early with Oral Roberts. Does Ohio State have any issues with Virginia Tech? 
No issues here. Ohio State moves along. Give me a second on the Hogs here. This is going to be the first Sweet 16 appearance for that program since 1996. Woo pig. There have been, 90, there have been 99 schools that have made the Sweet 16 since the last time the Hogs went there with Nolan Richardson. Uh, I do think that they're going to get past Utah State to move along, and then I'll I'll just I'll just hassle. I'll I'll take this. Okay, I got this. Is what I have in the in the Sweet 16. I'm going to move Baylor along here, trusting basically his guard play. Jared Butler, first team All American. Uh, Davion Mitchell, one of the top ten defenders in America, moves them in, and then I will take Arkansas hmm. to beat Ohio State. It's got the offense to match. It's got the speed to run with them. And Ohio State ultimately, you know, a small team that doesn't defend well. I, re I really, really love this uh, this Baylor Hogs matchup in the Elite Eight. And those would be two of the highest scoring teams in the country if they do end up matching up. So Matt Norlander in the South has top seeded Baylor against third seeded Arkansas. We've picked two regions so far with Matt Norlander, and we'll pick this thing all the way through, but we're, we're taking our time as we go. Let's go down to what most believe, and I know you and I both agree, that the Midwest is the most difficult bracket. That is the region with Illinois as the number one seed facing Drexel. Illinois advancing into the second round. Then the question becomes, does Loyola Chicago set up that juicy matchup with their in-state brethren? Well, that'd be something if Georgia Tech spoils this. I have I have important information directly from Josh Passner. He will be rocking the face shield today at 4 o'clock. Ooh, that's okay. a prop bet, it, by the way. You can bet on that right now. Oh, Josh Passner is on the record to me multiple times saying he will wear the face shield. Fantastic. So, I already got that bet happening. in, so that's a win. I've got Loyola Chicago moving on. Georgia Tech doesn't have Moses Wright. That's going to set up a fascinating second-round matchup. Loyola Chicago, top-10 team in Ken Palm. They should win. Okay, moving down. Tennessee, Oregon State. Oregon State won the Pac-12 tournament. Do they win? here. Battle of the Orange. Six teams wear orange in this corner of the region, by the way. No, I got Tennessee winning top five defense in the country. Top three future NBA players. Uh, sometimes I kick myself afterward. I cannot see a way Oregon State wins this game. So naturally, watch what happens. Okay. Oklahoma State Liberty. Liberty, the last time it was in the tournament, it was in this. It was a 12. It was 12 instead of a 13. It got a win here. This is a this is an upset nobody is talking about, and I'm taking OSU. But this is a classic case where we're like, why didn't we see that coming? Liberty has been flames over the past two months. They can get they can make it close, but I'm going to ride with the number one pick, Kate Cunningham. Okay, see what you did there. Now, San Diego State and Syracuse, the Orange, barely getting in. San Diego State would have been a one or a two seed last year. There are six Mountain West tournament champs. I'm a foolish man of overconfident predictions. I've got San Diego State winning this, and the game isn't even that competitive. Mm. Syracuse is a very trendy 11 over 6. Give me the back that as up. Give me the as text to win. <laughs> uh, listen, I am rolling right now, Hassel. <laughs> Morehead State versus Vir West Virginia. This is another one that I think can be pretty close here. Now, I'm going to move West Virginia into the second round, but of all the 14 threes, I get the sense that's the one we might have our eyes on with about two minutes to go, setting up a wonderful three versus six. And then at the bottom half, you don't mind me taking the wheel here. Sure, go Hassel. right ahead. I know I you can take, do it. I, there we go. I will take Clemson, the first Rutgers tournament in 30 years. Clemson has like six wins over good tournament teams this season. I will move Clemson along. I will move Houston along, but I think Cleveland State will cover in that game. Uh, quick story, short story. Cleveland State head coach Dennis Gates kind of got his start in the business with Houston coach Kelvin Sampson. It's interesting how sometimes these tournaments can create interesting storylines, even small ones like that. If we scroll back on up and get on, get on to the, uh, yeah, here we go. All right, I'm going to have Illinois moving on and beating Loyola Chicago, but do not get it twisted. Ramblers are good enough to win that game. If they do, Sister Jean in attendance, it's going to be the biggest freaking story in this tournament again. I will take Oklahoma State to beat Tennessee. Tennessee has not been as reliable as offensively as it needs to be. Kate Cunningham, Avery Anderson, they've been, Oklahoma State's been wonderful. Mike Boynton turning into one of the hotter coaches in the country. At the bottom half, since I think West Virginia might get picked off by Moorhead State, give me San Diego State. This would have been a two seed a year ago. Brought most of this roster back. I think it's actually better than a six. And then I will take Houston to beat Clemson in a grinder, a grinder of a game. They move along. And then it's into the Elite Eight here. Illinois, Oklahoma State. Io DeSumo versus Kate Cunningham. Brad Underwood at Illinois. Used to coach at Oklahoma State. His protege, Mike Boynton, now coaching there. Storylines galore. This is the best Sweet 16 game we can possibly get. Give me Illinois. And then I will have Houston begrudgingly. I almost... Almost went with another six into the Elite Eight, but I will go chalk for that regional final. Now you have USC in the Elite Eight in the West. We've got one more region to fill out with Matt Norlander, and that's the East. Michigan is the one seed there. Are they the shakiest one seed in your opinion? 
They are the shakiest one seed, uh, that, and everyone's on to this, by the way. I was wondering if this was going to be the case on Selection Sunday. Oh, boy, is it ever. So I've got them beating Texas Southern. LSU St. Bonaventure is the most compelling first-round game we will have. I'm going to take LSU with its pros to beat the Bonnies and set up a one versus eight there. Colorado Georgetown, I don't think Georgetown has much of a chance here. Uh, Colorado moves along easily. Best seed in school history, by the way, in the NCAA tournament for the Buffs. Hashtag roll tad. Florida State, UNC Greensboro, I'm going to go with the Knowles. Now, they are coming off a game in which they had 25 turnovers. UNC Greensboro is well coached. It's got a stud in Isaiah Miller. I'm going to take the better team. Florida State has a good recent history in tournament performance. Then we're going to get to BYU versus UCLA. Talk with Mark Pope, BYU coach, on Thursday night. His team is loose. His team is good to go. One of their players got stuck in an elevator. They saved him. They're on They got some momentum here. UCLA, I just don't think it's that good. I will take BYU to move along. And then Texas Abilene Christian, another one of those games where I don't see any way Abilene Christian gets, keeps this competitive. I will go with Texas to move along there. And then how about this? We've got Georgetown back in the tournament after a long time in this region. We have UConn back. Good Big East flavor here. I don't think Mark Turgeon is going to step to Danny Hurley the way he did Juwan Howard, but I desperately want it to happen. Give me UConn. It's got the best player in James Booknight, even though Maryland has the better trio. And then Alabama to beat Iona in a wonderful head coaching matchup. Uh, Matt, I just got a text from uh, one of our co-anchors, Amanda Guerra. She said, uh, Norlander just took your job. Nice knowing you. Uh, so I just wanted to jump in and let people know that I, I am still here. I just want to reset this bracket for us because I think you're going to you're gonna stun some people with a pick you have coming up at the top of the region. You said Michigan is the shakiest one seed. Do they go down? Do they become the first one seed to go down in your bracket? They do, and so a quick history lesson as to why. All but four years since the tournament expanded, at least one of the eight ones or twos doesn't make the second weekend here. This is my pick. LSU takes out Michigan, which does not have a complete roster available here. The LSU has the offense and the pros. Cam Thomas, if you're not aware, Cam Thomas could be entirely capable by the time we get to Sweet 16, if LSU advances, averaging 28, eight and five. Awesome player. I will take Michigan, Michigan to lose LSU with a, something of a shocker. And then FSU to beat Colorado. It's got Scotty Barnes at point. Does FSU. I like them to advance plenty. Go ahead, Hassel. No, no, no. I, hey, I just wanted to get like one or two words in. BYU and Texas. I think a lot of people are going to have BYU lose opening round. And Texas kind of cruise into the Sweet 16. Texas is the most talented non-one seed in the field. Uh, I do absolutely like them to move on here. BYU can give a good game. I actually really like this as a potential close game, but give me the Longhorns. And then UConn-Alabama, UConn does not have the players to keep up. Alabama plays like an NBA team. We had a whole big story on it at CBSSports.com. You should go Google my name and Google Alabama and read it. You'll learn a lot. It's very fun. And then here, all right, that's what I like. You know, two, three, four, and an eight. I will take FSU. At a certain point, you got to... You got to know when to bail if you're taking a real big chance there. FSU has made an Elite Eight in recent seasons. And uh, MJ Walker is my was my pick on CBSSports.com as the uh, most likely player to hit a buzzer beater. So I will go with FSU here. And then I will take, this is the second best Sweet 16 game we could possibly get. Illinois, Oklahoma State is the first. Then Texas, Alabama. Give me the Longhorns to advance to the regional final and what could be a classic regional semifinal between the Horns and the Tide. So here is Matt Norlander's Elite Eight. He has three one seeds, but only one two seed. So he's got the six seeded USC advancing to face Gonzaga in the West. It's a 4-3 matchup in the East. Arkansas upsetting a little bit of an upset against Ohio State, the two seed in the South. Illinois, Houston, the only one two matchup. We are going to have Matt Norlander pick his final four and national champion on the other side of this quick timeout. All right, Matt Norlander is taking us through his bracket. We've reached the Elite Eight. We are in the Midwest. Uh, sorry, we are in the uh, West, and that's Gonzaga, the one seed advancing. He has three of the four one seeds in his Elite Eight, but Gonzaga facing a USC team that he thinks is going to make a run here. Does that run continue against the Zags? It does not. I cannot talk myself out of Gonzaga into the Final Four. In fact, I don't think USC will even keep it too competitive in that hypothetical matchup there. Gonzaga's got three of the top ten players in the sport hassle, as you well know. So I've got Gonzaga moving along. Uh, if you want to scoot down to the east, I will take Texas to beat Florida State. As I previously said, this is the most talented non-one seed in the field. I'm going to bank on the talent. Love Kai Jones. Greg Brown is a freshman that has the capability of providing us two or three all-time dunks in this tournament there. 
And uh, Andrew Jones is a wonderful, wonderful story, uh, a true stud there. Uh, where do you want to go next, Hassel? Well, it's, it's a little bit more chalky on the right side. Uh, you have a 1-3 and a 1-2. Let's go to the south region, Baylor, Arkansas, two of the top scoring offenses in the country. All right, one of the biggest stories to be heading into this tournament is, will Baylor's defense return to form? I am going to pick Baylor to beat Arkansas in what is probably, in my opinion, when I look at these four games, that's the best potential matchup, most entertaining, closest. But I'm going to bank on Baylor's defense returning to form. And the offense has gotten back in, into shape. But since the COVID pause, Baylor's defense has been like sub-70 in the sport there. Give me the Bears and the guards to pull it out. And then with Illinois versus Houston, I have to take Illinois here. It is so much more well-rounded on both ends of the floor. Kofi Coburn, Io DeSumo, Andre Curbelo could be uh, cer certainly uh, you know something of a cult hero in this tournament there. So I've got three ones and a three. And real quick on my, on my reasoning here, I can't determine, Hassel, whether or not this unique NCAA tournament with all of the circumstances surrounding it is going to lead to absolute complete chaos. Or if we're going to have the one seeds, the power conference schools that have been living in this kind of COVID world more consistently on a day-to-day -day basis because of their power conference affiliations, if that might help them a little bit, I'm eager to see that. I'm going to lean with the ones and then Texas, which if it was a one, frankly, I might have all four one seeds in the, in the final four. Yeah, I feel like um, it, it could go either one of those ways. Did the first four teach you anything last night with the two one-point games and the overtime game? Not a ton just yet. All it taught me was the first four needs to be on on one day heading into the tournament yeah, permanently great. going forward. That was amazing. Yes. Gonzaga, Texas for the right to play in the national championship game. Who you got? I've got the Zags getting to 31-0 and with Corey Kispert, Jalen Suggs. Drew Timmy, this is Jalen Suggs' time. He's going to probably, he's almost certainly going to be a top five pick, and he could take over parts of this tournament the way Derrick Rose did for Memphis as a freshman. Must see. That was 13 years ago. Good God, we're getting old. And then Baylor versus Illinois. These teams have played this season, and Baylor won. Illinois gets its revenge victory. It beats Baylor. Io DeSumo continues to have a, a, an incredible tournament, in my opinion, and it sets up. The two best teams in the final uh, in, in Indianapolis at Lucas Oil Stadium. So give me the Fighting Illini to play Gonzaga. Gonzaga is the favorite going into the tournament. Two to one favorites. Illinois, you can get at six to one. This is a matchup a lot of people are going to have. I think most are going to have Gonzaga winning it. Who do you have? I have Illinois. I'm the only expert at CBS Sports that has Illinois. I'm kind of surprised by that. It avenges its loss in the 05 title game, wins it, and yes, gives heartbreak to Gonzaga. It will be its second national title loss in five seasons, and it will be one game short of winning an under a championship as an undefeated team. Illinois is your champion in 2021. You might be the only CBS expert that has Illinois, but, but I also have Illinois. I know I'm not an expert, but I also have Illinois beating Gonzaga in the national championship game. Matt, that was a lot of fun. Uh, best of luck to you in your bracket. I know it means a lot to you. I know you take it very seriously. Uh, some great insight from Matt Norlander as he helps us fill out the bracket. Play right now. Bracket Games, you have uh, just a couple hours to go, but you can fill things out all the way till noon. Join Bracket Games on the CBS Sports app for cbssports.com slash bracket.